great 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 so welcome all of you in this uh, new series of med school at our old dams uh, delhi youtube channel and uh, today we will start with the dermatology class the dermatology school so i thought of uh, you know like uh, uh, i brought a topic which is very frequently asked uh, in our exams and it's a very interesting topic which need a lot of discussion and understanding so today we will discuss a topic and that is a topic of acne vulgaris in your exam you tend to get a lot of questions from acne there are students uh, you know uh, they, they get confused between the pathogenesis of acne what are the different causes what are the different grades of acne how to treat them so today i thought of discussing this topic in detail i do have some questions also which are asked in the previous year uh, exams so this will make it more easier for the students to relate so just give me a quick thumbs up all of you if my audio video is clear and you all are ready for the today's class everyone uh, can you all <clears throat> give me a quick thumbs up so we will start with the topic of acne vulgaris which is the frequently asked topic in our dermatology so yes i can see a lot of student giving me a thumbs up so very nice all of you now what is acne vulgaris each and everything <clears throat> each and everything is a question because uh, you do get questions from the pathogenesis you get the questions from the different grades of acne from the treatment part and from the variants so today i will discuss all these topics in detail first we are starting with the pathogenesis of acne vulgaris now this is my question to all my students can you tell me acne vulgaris is a disease or it is a problem related to the which gland of our body anybody can tell me the answer acne vulgaris is related to which gland something related to the skin that i hope you all know everybody had acne once or twice so what is this yes very nice so please remember students that acne vulgaris is a disease of pilosebaceous gland acne vulgaris is a disease of pilosebaceous gland this is very important not sebaceous gland it is the hair and the sebaceous gland together so whenever you have hair and sebaceous gland together and when that is affected you call it as acne vulgaris very nice now let us first understand what is the pathogenesis of acne vulgaris so this is the block of your skin this is your hair follicle right this is epidermis this is dermis and below dermis we have hypodermis and this is a beautiful hair which is coming out of the hair follicle so this is your hair so everyone i want you to please concentrate because i'm about to discuss the pathogenesis of acne vulgaris acne vulgaris is a disease of pilo sebaceous gland so this is the hair which is coming out of the hair follicle now please remember students that in the hair follicle there is a structure which opens and this is your sebaceous gland something like this at the time of puberty under the effect of androgen what happens at the time of puberty the androgen stimulates your sebaceous gland to produce sebum i hope you know what is sebum it is made up of cholesterol it is made up of vex aster and squalene so sometimes you get a question over this also sebum which is made up of cholesterol vex aster and squalene so that is the one question we have covered one question was this that the acne was a disease of pilosebaceous gland and second although not very frequently asked nowadays but it is a old question that sebum is made up of so three components we have cholesterol we have vex aster and we have squalene so what happens are at the time of puberty under the effect of androgen the sebaceous gland start producing the sebum so this is the sebum sebum it drains out from the sebaceous gland through the sebaceous duct into the hair follicle and from the hair follicle it comes out like this onto the surface of the skin so i'm sure that you all must have observed that after puberty there is an oily layer which comes on your skin very frequently yes or no can i get a quick thumbs up so this oily layer which get deposited on your skin after the puberty this is nothing but the sebum which is coming out of the sebaceous gland into the hair follicle and from the hair follicle it is going out into the <clears throat> into the skin or onto the skin so that is the oily layer which is sebum now what is the first step in development of acne in some prone individuals there is hypercornification or what happens there is a block on the outflow of the hair follicle so what is the step one in the development of the hair uh, acne vulgaris obstruction to the outflow of the hair follicle 
obstruction to the outflow of hair follicle and how this obstruction occur there is a thin epithelium which grows from the surrounding skin can you see it here so there is a thin epithelium which covers the hair follicular outflow so what is happening the sebum is getting produced but it is not coming out because of the obstruction this sebum is getting accumulated just below this obstruction can you see it here this is the obstruction and there is a sebum and because of the obstruction because of the sebum there is a slight bulge which is seen on this obstruction and this small bulge on the skin this is known as comedone so the first clinical lesion the grade one of acne is comedone and what is comedone it is just the obstruction of the hair follicular outflow so comedone is what you see as the first step that is grade one now please remember there are two types of comedone one is known as closed comedone which is also known as white head why it is known as white head now everyone please look on the screen now there is an obstruction you can see that blue color obstruction here can you see that obstruction when it is completely closed you can see the sebum underneath this obstruction this is a thin epithelium and the sebum which is present below it is shiny it is white in color so this is known as closed comedone or white head but what is open comedone what is open comedone there is a very small opening which remains in the follicular outflow obstruction and this allow the air to enter this obstruction and causes oxidation of the sebum turning it into black color so please remember students that the white head is closed comedone but the black head which is due to the oxidation of sebum it is known as open comedone open comedone so this is your black head so this is the grade one of acne if you all are clear please give me a quick thumbs up now uh, now students uh, they are, they always ask me that ma'am what is the sequence which comes first open comedone comes first or closed comedone comes first please remember there is nothing like that a uh, acne can start with the open comedone can progress into the second stage third stage fourth stage it is not necessary that always after open comedone or always after closed comedone there is another type of comedone that is not necessary so please that don't get confused with these type of question they are all useless question that which comes first whether it is open or closed see now now if if you think logically the skin is you know like it, it, the skin from the adjacent part is growing and covering the uh, you know the hair follicular outflow so there is a possibility that the open comedone can appear first or the closed comedone can appear first but that is not something which is necessary understood this point problem chal great now coming to the second now due to the obstruction what happens there is a bacteria which is present in your hair follicular normally now what is that bacteria that is known as propione bacterium acne it is the normal commensal of our hair follicle due to the obstruction this bacteria start proliferating and what it forms it causes more and more increase in the bulge so obstruction the second step is proliferation of the acne there is proliferation of propione bacterium acne and because of this i am drawing or i am making this p acne with red color you can see because of this the bulge increases and clinically you will see a papule <clears throat> this is your grade 2 this is your grade 2 now what happens whenever you have bacteria your body will try to get rid of it and can you tell me how the body will try to get rid of it anyone if you have bacteria anywhere in your body your body will try to send the inflammatory cells so that they can go and kill this bacteria here also there is a lot of bacteria in our hair follicle so the next step is the body will send the inflammatory cells at the site of bacterial collection so third step in the development of acne vulgaris is you have recruitment of <coughs> recruitment of inflammatory cells in hair follicle and can you tell me what is the collection of inflammatory cells anywhere in the body known as it is known as pus and in the skin it is known as pustule so pustule becomes the grade 3 so <coughs> i am very sorry <coughs> so this is the blue color and this is your inflammatory cells 
because of so much of sebum inside the hair follicle because of p acne inside the hair follicle and because of inflammatory cell inside the hair follicle what happens the hair follicle will stretch there will be a point when the hair follicle will break and this will give rise to fourth step and what is this this is your rupture of hair follicle this is rupture of hair follicle and when the hair follicle rupture you get what is known as nodulocystic acne you get what is known as nodulocystic acne so please don't get confused these are the four steps the grade one is your comedone the grade one is your comedone the grade two is your papule the grade four is your pustule and the grade five is your nodulocystic grade four is your nodulocystic acne understood till here everybody clear so uh, somebody is asking ma'am what type of inflammatory cells you see it can be anything not necessary only neutrophil it can be anything any type of inflammatory cells can get uh, collected inside your hair follicle understood this point clear clear or not chalo now there was a question which was asked and the question was which of the following factor is not responsible for development of acne now and one of the option is the food can you tell me is the oily food related to the development of hair uh, development of acne or not it is not related i you can see the whole pathogenesis the oily food is not at all related to the development of the acne and this is a common myth and this is also one of the previous year mcq please remember it is not the oily food which triggers the acne what are the triggers can you tell me what are the food agents which can trigger your acne anybody can give me the answer what are the food which can trigger the acne so that is another question which is coming here and that is there are two food agents one is the food with high glycemic index high glycemic index food and the second is milk and milk product so this is our next question which is frequently asked the food which triggers acne food which triggers acne the high glycemic index food and the milk with milk product now another question one of the aims the uh, paper has asked this question why the milk and milk product they are known to trigger more acne now imagine i'll tell you very simple situation like if if any one of you have attended my live classes or my face to face classes i always give this example so i'll tell you a simple story i was sitting in my opd and uh, there was a 14 year old girl uh, she was a 14 to 15 year old girl adolescent individual she was brought to me uh, by her mother and she told me that ma'am uh, she eats lot of oily food and that is why there is lot of acne on her face but please remember it is not the oily food you have to tell that patient that it is the milk and the milk product which is triggering more acne in this female so let her eat that oily food but stop milk and milk product can you do that no never do that because definitely if you say a mother not to give milk to their child they will not understand but that is actually true please remember milk and milk product milk and milk product they trigger the acne as well as the high glycemic index food and why the reason is they produce insulin like growth factor 1 and insulin like growth factor 1 it is known to produce sebum production they increase the sebum production and you know that when there is more sebum there is more chances of getting the acne understood <clears throat> is this clear everyone can i get a quick thumbs up from all of you clear hai chal so this is this is the another question which is frequently asked in your exams now coming to the treatment part from the treatment point of view also there are so many questions which you can get in your acne ka topic let us start with the treatment now coming to the treatment we will discuss the treatment on the basis of the grades starting with the grade 1 what is the grade 1 acne it is a comedone it can be a open comedone it can be a closed comedone it can be a open comedone it can be a closed comedone okay can be open can be closed now think and tell me if you remember in pathogenesis i told you the main cause of comedone is obstruction to the follicular outflow there is a thin epithelium which causes obstruction to the follicular outflow sebum is not coming out so please think and tell me what should be the best treatment approach if you have to treat somebody who has comedone what you should give anyone can tell me the answer very nice you have to give a keratolytic drug 
you have to give a keratolytic drug we need to give something which remove that thin epithelium which is formed and what are the keratolytic drugs these are topical retinoids please remember frequently asked mcq what are the two topical retinoids whenever i ask in my class what are topical retinoids almost 10 to 20 percent of uh, students they say isotretinoin please remember isotretinoin is a oral retinoid what are the topical retinoids these are adapalin retinoin okay so please search for these options frequently asked mcq i think i've seen this question more than two to three times in the last five ten years so please remember this is very very important very very important so grade one acne the treatment of choice is keratolytic drug topical retinoids now coming to grade two now what was grade two grade two was a papu now think and tell me think and tell me what was the reason for formation of papu what was happening inside the hair follicle which was responsible for development of a papule? Anyone can tell me? Yes, there was proliferation of propionic bacterium acne. And just tell me, if the propionic bacterium acne is proliferating, what should be the treatment of choice? We have to take care of this bacterial proliferation. So, what should be the treatment of choice? Very nice. The answer is, it should be a antibiotic. And we prefer giving topical antibiotics here so treatment of choice for grade 2 is topical antibiotics what are the topical antibiotics i think you all know there are so many topical antibiotics available for example we have clindamycin we have topical dapson we have benzoyl peroxide and there are so many topical antibiotics available in the market and what is the reason when to give whenever you see the papular lesion so papules due to bacterial proliferation the treatment of choice here is for the grade 2 acne is topical retinoid. Coming to the grade 3. What is grade 3? Can you tell me what is the grade 3? It is pustule. And pustule means what is happening? There is proliferation of or there is a recruitment of the inflammatory cells inside the hair follicle. So if you have to think of a drug, what should be the drug? You have to give an anti-inflammatory drug. Here the choice is anti-inflammatory and whenever I say this to my students, I'm sure that like right now also at least 10 to 20 percent of the students, they are thinking of steroids. Yes or no? Please remember, we never give steroids, neither oral, neither topical in the patients of acne. Never give steroids in an acne patient. Never ever give steroids. Okay? What anti-inflammatory then we have? Please remember, there are some antibiotics oral antibiotics which has antibacterial as well as anti-inflammatory action and these are the drugs which belongs to tetracycline group so what are the tetracycline group of oral antibiotics we have doxycycline and we have minocycline so we prefer we prefer giving oral antibiotics as the treatment of choice for grade 3 so grade 2 topical antibiotics and grade 3 oral antibiotics whenever there is presence of whenever there is presence of lot of pustules try giving an oral antibiotic as well coming to grade 4 what was grade 4 it is a nodulocystic type of acne it is a nodulocystic type of acne and can you tell me the treatment of choice frequently asked question i'll put star mark over here frequently asked question what should be the treatment of choice for grade 4 acne and anybody can tell me the answer the answer is here you prefer oral retinoids and which oral retinoid everybody know that name it is isotretinoin isotretinoin which has multiple actions it worked on step one it also it causes reduced production of sebum second it is a keratolytic drug it has anti-inflammatory role also plus it stabilizes the hair follicular epithelium so multiple action and that is why it is considered to be a preferred drug for the treatment of grade 4 acne so please remember students grade 4 the treatment of choice remains isotretinoin i hope this is clear to all my students okay so very frequently these questions are asked they can give you a clinical image based question they can give you a picture of comedon they can ask you a treatment of choice now just just i'm showing you one one very simple question which we got i think in a few years back 
I am not very much sure in which year, but this was the question. Now, can you try solving this question, bacho? Can you tell me what is this? You can see a picture and let me first zoom this picture. Everyone, eyes on the board. Look at this. Can you tell me what lesion is this? What do you see? You can see a raised lesion with a black dot in the center. Can you identify what clinical image is this? This is your open comedones. Can you see them? Let me just point out. This is the open comedones. So many open comedones are seen. Can you see this? This is your closed comedone. So closed comedone looks white in color. The open comedone looks black in color. So this is a patient with comedones. What is the first line treatment for acne comedone? Can you answer this question now? It's so easy. It is topical retinoid. Understood, bacho? So it's very simple. Remember this point that whenever they give you a clinical image based question, you have to remember what is the treatment of choice for grade 1, 2, 3 and 4. Understood? Okay, chalo. So, this is one of the examples. Now, coming to the next important point which is asked in the acne topic. <clears throat> they will ask you the side effects of isotretinoin. Very frequently asked. Because isotretinoin is something which is used very frequently. So, they can ask you the question related to the isotretinoin and its side effects. So, let us discuss the side effects of isotretinoin here. Now, isotretinoin, there was actually a question from uh, FMG paper and they have asked you what is the side effect of 13 cis retinoic acid. 13 cis retinoic acid. Please remember, 13 cis retinoic acid is nothing but another name of isotretinoin or chemical structure of isotretinoin. So, you can get this question in NEET also. This is a FMG question. Side effect of 13 cis retinoic acid. Or this is nothing but isotretinoin. So, isotretinoin, the most common side effect is dryness. Dryness where? Dryness can be on skin. Dryness can be on the lips. Obviously, lips are more sensitive. So, you tend to perceive the dryness more on the lips compared to the skin. But it can occur anywhere on the body and this is considered to be the most common side effect. If any one of you has taken isotretinoin in the past, I am sure that you all have felt this dryness. Like it comes immediately. Okay, so that is first. Second, whenever your dermatologists start giving you isotretinoin, they will always ask for some investigations. Like they will ask for liver function test. Why? Because isotretinoin is known to alter LFT. It is known to alter liver function test. Plus, it also increases the triglyceride levels. So, two investigations should be done before giving isotretinoin. One is liver function test. <coughs> Sorry, second is lipid profile. So, <clears throat> coming to the next side effect, photosensitivity. Whenever you have to take isotretinoin, you always need to take this drug in the night. Why? Because isotretinoin it make your skin sensitive to the sun and that is why you tend to develop these uh, you know redness or burning whenever you take isotretinoin in the morning and you go out, go out in the sun those who have photosensitive dermatosis for example pmle for example sle we never give isotretinoin to these individuals so please remember photosensitivity is also one of the side effect next pseudo tumor cerebri pseudo tumor Cerebri. This is a space occupying lesion which occurs in the CNS and this is also one of the side effects. Now, uh, please uh, listen to me very carefully. Now, sometimes imagine there is a patient, everyone listen to me, imagine there is a patient and an uh, acne patient, you know, acne vulgaris is a polymorphic disease. It means that patient can have comedones, can have papules, can have pustules and nodules all together. So, it's not that only comedone will occur or only papule will occur. No, it's a polymorphic disease. Now, imagine there is a patient with some, uh, you know, some pustules along with nodules, uh, nodules and cysts. You sometimes give antibiotics along with that of isotretinoin. But please remember this side effect. Any antibiotic with a similar side effect of pseudotumor cerebri never combine it with isotretinoin. And that is why we never combine the tetracycline group of drugs with isotretinoin. 
because tetracycline group of drug it is known to cause pseudo tumor cell death so please remember if a patient comes with pustular lesions or if a question comes with pustular lesions with nodular cystic acne and you have to give two drug do not mention that tetracycline with isotretinoin because of this side effect now sometimes some patients take the isotretinoin for a very long duration now there is one question which was asked uh, very very uh, long back what is the maximum cumulative dose of isotretinoin after which it causes serious side effects it is 120 to 150 mg per kg body weight and if somebody takes beyond it what happens he develops a side effect which is known as dish diffuse idiopathic skeleton hyperostosis so that is another side effect and the last but very important side effect is it is teratogenic teratogenicity is a very important side effect and i have seen so many questions being asked from this particular topic so please remember teratogenicity means whenever you are giving isotretinoin to a married reproductive age female always do a urine pregnancy test at least two upt in two consecutive cycles should be negative only then you can start that person on uh, uh, isotretinoin if any female is planning also just tell this that this is a teratogenic drug now there was a question the question was uh, that a female who is already on isotretinoin please listen to me everyone there was a question which was asked the question was a married female who was already on isotretinoin uh, she came to you and she asked that she is now planning for pregnancy now because she is planning for pregnancy obviously the first step is you have to stop isotretinoin but the question was after how many days she can think of getting pregnant because even if you stop a drug it remains in your body for some time right it is not completely washed on the second day so what is that period for which she has to keep extra care or she has to keep contraception uh, before thinking of pregnancy after stopping isotretinoin can you give me the answer so i got so many uh, already i got the answers from the students very nice the answer is there should be at least a 1 to 3 month strict contraception after stopping the drug so when you stop the drug after stopping it at least 1 to 3 month the female has to take extra uh, precautions because <coughs> uh, there is a chance that uh, you know there is a slight amount of isotretinoin in the circulation and it can affect the growing baby so please remember this point it is 1 to 3 month of strict contraception now there are many many students who ask me that ma'am what happens after 3 months like if somebody is planning uh, if somebody has taken isotretinoin one year back and now she is thinking of pregnancy does it affect the baby the answer is completely no the isotretinoin is easily washed out completely washed out from your body so it will not remain after 1 to 3 months 3 months is the maximum period it will not remain post that okay so patient can plan the uh, pregnancy now students are asking what about acetretin very nice see isotretinoin is a oral retinoin which is used in acne vulgaris there is one more oral retinoid which is acetretin acetretin which is used in the psoriasis patient the period of contraception is 3 year here it is 3 months there it is 3 years why because isotretinoin is a water soluble drug it remains in your body for 1 to 3 months but acetretin it is a lipid soluble drug it goes inside the fat cells and remain in your body for 3 years so any female of psoriasis you are planning for acetretin counsel her that after stopping the drug there should be at least 3 year contraception so these are the two questions which you can get in your exam okay so i'm just highlighting it with a different color 3 year for acetretin 3 months for 1 to 3 months for isotretinoin theek hai done understood so that is also something which is frequently asked now there is one more question which is asked and you know which is also related to your uh, treatment part and it is this question or try answering this question everyone a 16 year old girl with moderate acne complains of irregular menses which of the following is considered to be the drug of choice what can you think here what is what should be the answer 
16 year old girl with moderate acne see they have not mentioned anything about the type of acne they have not mentioned whether it was pustular papular comedone but something which is important here is that the acne is associated with irregular menses it is giving you an idea that this is a acne which is related to hormonal imbalance i hope you all are aware that you know hormone can trigger the development of acne and that is why i'm sure that many of the females who are listening to my class you must have observed that during your periods or at the time or few days before your period you tend to get one or more acne on your face so that is because of abnormality in your periods or abnormality in your hormones now here they are mentioning that there is irregular menses associated with moderate acne this means that the patient has hormonal acne and please remember for anything related to the hormone you have to treat it differently so you can give oral contraceptive pills when you give ocp from outside the endogenous production of the hormones it stops and this can cause improvement in the acne understood this point right so please remember you can get this type of question related to your treatment also <coughs> now coming to something known as very important there are syndromes related to the acne there are four syndromes which are asked in your exam which are related to the acne the first two which is important and they ask you question is sarfo syndrome and saha syndrome sarfo and saha syndrome sarfo and saha syndrome now can you tell me what is the what are the components of sarfo and saha i want my students to answer i will not tell the answer here you have to tell me s what is the s of sarfo and what is the s of saha because that is the only one question we got from this topic anybody can tell me the answer anyone i'm waiting achal venda manil so what is the s of sarfo first tell me the s of sarfo very nice the s of sarfo is synovitis and the s of saha is seborrhea okay so it is again not very frequently asked it is a very old question we got it very very like i think uh, so many years back but please remember sarfo syndrome it is synovitis it is acne it is pustulosis hyperostosis and ostitis and what is saha it is seborrhea acne hirsutism and androgenic alopecia so please remember these are some of the syndromes although not very frequently asked we got one question from this topic and the question was this i think now it becomes easy for my students to solve can you tell me the answer here which of the following is not the component of sarfo syndrome so when when they ask you this type of straight forward question then it actually confuse you whether it was <coughs> synovitis or seborrhea so what will be the answer here the answer becomes the sarfo it is synovitis for sarfo synovitis for saha it is seborrhea clear understood so please remember these two syndromes they can be asked in your exam sarfo and saha now there are two more syndrome can you help me with those two syndromes what are the other two syndromes there is one is papa syndrome and the next is harem so what is papa it is pyogenic arthritis pyogenic arthritis pyoderma gangrenosum and acne and what is hair and syndrome hyperandrogenism so patient will have features of hypoandrogenism insulin resistance and acanthosis nigricans okay so these are the syndromes uh, which 
although not very common but can be asked to just remember their name till now we have got only one question and that was uh, the difference between the sapo and uh, or what is the s of the sapo syndrome <coughs> clear with this uh, now coming to the next part uh, of the acne and actually these are the acne variants you do get questions on the acne variant also and that is why i thought of putting uh, small pictures of all these acne variants first and a very important acne variant is acne excori have you heard of this terminology acne excori there was a question also and this is your acne excori now i've seen people you know like i'm, I'm sure that uh, many of you you are also doing the same thing so whenever you develop pustular acne or you have some you know like uh, nodular cystic acne you feel that you know if i puncture it it will heal better yes or no how many of you agree with it happens right you feel that okay it's better to you know remove all this stuff out let's clean it it will heal better please remember that is not correct practice when you touch your acne you are making them more prone to get scar as well as more pigmentation after healing so please remember acne excori is when you pick the acne picking the acne or excoriating the acne what are the chances you can get increased scarring and you get increased pigmentation you can get a question in your exam for example they can give you a question that there was a patient with body dysmorphic syndrome she tend to scratch the lesion and after scratching she develop a picture very similar to that the picture will show you that there is more pigmentation there is more scarring and they will ask you at the end what is the diagnosis so please remember this is acne excori this was a old question was asked once what is acne excori an image based question was given now if i ask you what is the treatment please remember treatment of acne will remain same but always add behavioral modification therapy it means you have to teach patient not to touch the acne because if you treat this this time the next time he will develop an acne he will do the same thing he will try picking the acne please ask these patients that they don't have to touch them they have to make it a habit that whenever they have acne even if they get that impulse of touching it they should not do it some ocd patients can also have these type of complaints they will tell you that i just get that impulse until unless i am not scratching them i am not you know i get very anxious so just teach them just have a behavioral modification therapy you can just arrange these sessions with the psychiatrist and all but you have to ask them not to touch their acne okay so this is your acne excori the first variant <coughs> second is drug induced acne they will ask you an exam what are the drugs which causes acne anyone can tell me what are the drugs which causes acne and i have made a mnemonic for drug induced acne and what is that mnemonic it is pimple p for phenytoin then it is isoniazide then methyl cobalamin what is vitamin uh, what is methyl cobalamin anyone what is methyl cobalamin it is vitamin b12 so I, I, have you anybody of you have observed that if you have taken injections of isotretinoin uh, sorry injections of methyl cobalamin you develop some pustular lesions on the trunk on the face very very common side effect of the uh, vitamin b12 therapy then there is one more p and this is for progesterone so it is the progesterone component which is more uh, uh, acnogenic l for lithium and e for epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitor so please remember that the drug which induce acne the mnemonic is pimple now what is the clinical feature how does it differs from acne vulgaris which we have read till now if you remember i told you acne vulgaris what is acne vulgaris <coughs> it is polymorphic you get all the lesions comedone papule pustule nodule all together but in drug induced acne it is monomorphic only one type of lesion and please remember they either forms all lesions as a papule or all lesion as pustule so please remember drug induced acne they are monomorphic acne okay drug induced acne they are monomorphic acne so this is also frequently asked question they can give you a clinical picture with all the comedones on it or uh, sorry all the papules on it or all the pustules on it 
you can get a history of intake of any drug recently and this becomes the drug induced acne if somebody asks you which is the most common drug what will be your answer <coughs> what is the answer the most common drug causing drug induced acne which is that drug among this list which is taken very frequently in our country in india if i talk about india which is that drug which is taken very frequently anyone can tell me the answer <coughs> the answer is isoniazide students tell me that ma'am it is progesterone because ocp are taken more no in india tb drugs are taken more than ocps so the answer becomes isoniazide which is a att understood att <coughs> Uh, yes, Anila, you are right. Uh, in pregnancy, the acne increases because of hormonal imbalance. The progesterone shoots up and can give rise to formation of acne. <coughs> now, coming to the next variant of acne, and this is your chloracne. Have you heard of this terminology? What is chloracne? Now, chloracne is actually the occupational acne. Which occurs due to the hydrocarbon of chlorines. And that is why, because it is occurring due to the chlorine related hydrocarbons, we have given it a name chloracne. But the question is why or where these hydrocarbons of chlorines are used? Which occupation? We are talking about the oil industry. The oil industries. We are talking about the oil industries. So, if you have visited, uh, uh, like, if uh, sometimes you go for your car service or your bike service, you have seen those mechanics uh, who work there. Now, please remember, these mechanics they have to work with oil throughout the day, and because of that, what happens? Sometimes the oily layer get deposited on their skin. This oil act like a follicular obstructor. It will obstruct the follicular outflow. And the patient will present to you with these type of classical monomorphic lesions where you will see all the comedones. So, what is the clinical feature here? The clinical feature is these are monomorphic acne. Monomorphic acne where there is all comedones. Monomorphic acne where there is all comedones. So, this is very classical and uh, uh, it occurs in the patients who work in the oil industry, like petroleum industry, the mechanics, the car car manufacturing uh, industries. So wherever you have the use of oil, which contain the hydrocarbons of the halogens, you tend to get these type of uh, monomorphic eruptions, which are usually all comedones. Okay, okay. Now, what is the treatment of all these variants? See, for acne excoriate, I told you that you have to ask the patient not to excoriate whenever he develops the lesions again. For drug induced acne, yes, the best treatment is you have to stop that drug. If the lesion is not getting clear by just stopping the drug, you can treat accordingly what type of lesions you are getting. If papules are there, then give antibiotic. If pustules are there, then you know, like oral topical, like that. For chloracne, again, the same thing, it is all comedone. So, first, you have to ask the patient to reduce the exposure to the oil. Obviously, like ask them to wash the face, wash the body again and again. Uh, they should not let the oil uh, stay on their skin and because they are comedone, you can give some keratolytic drugs which can take care of all of them. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, understood. Uh, uh, yes. So, <clears throat> obviously, uh, somebody is saying that uh, obviously somebody cannot stop phenytoin and like <coughs> if a patient of TB comes to me and she says or he says that I am having TB. I am on ATT and I am having acne. So, I cannot tell her to stop the TB medicines, right? Same thing with phenytoin also. You cannot tell the patient to stop this drug. Uh, and because, you know, like if he stops taking phenytoin or isoniazide, the main, uh, the main illness will increase, right? So, you can just ask the patient that this uh, acne is due to this drug and when this drug will stop, you will become normal. Meanwhile, just give some uh, topical therapies to the patient to take care of the present use. That should be the approach when you treat the patient. Understood now? Clear? <clears throat> now coming to the uh, one more variant of acne and this, this is considered to be a severe variant. This is known as acne beta or acne pulmonense. So just have a... Before showing you the picture, let, let us just discuss both of them together. 
acne conglobatum and acne fulminans. Okay, so acne conglobata and acne fulminans. What is acne conglobata? It is very similar to grade 4 acne. What was grade 4? Can you tell me what was grade 4? Grade 4 was nodule and cyst. So whenever a patient develops nodulocystic acne on the face, but along with that on the chest, on the back. So extensive grade 4 acne is considered to be a acne conglobata. Can you see this picture? This is your acne conglobata patient. You can see a lot of nodules. You can see presence of these lesions on the face, on the trunk. This is your acne conglobata. You can also see development. Can you see the next picture? The picture which is present over here. You can see presence of some abscesses, some draining sinuses, discharges. So this is a severe type of uh, grade for acne. This is known as acne conglobata. Now the question is, what is acne fulminans then? Let us first write acne conglobata. It is the nodulocystic acne on face and trunk. The nodulocystic acne on face and trunk and please remember that here they can also have so can be associated with discharging sinuses, pus formation, What is acne fulminans? Now what happens sometimes in these acne conglobata lesions, please listen to me very carefully, sometimes in the acne conglobata lesions there is development of inflammation. What are the signs of inflammation? You will see redness, you will see swelling, you will see pain, patient can have fever. When these systemic feature presents in an acne conglobata patient, the signs of inflammation in an acne conglobata patients will give it a name which is known as acne fulminans. So what is acne fulminans? It is the, the nodulocystic acne with lot of inflammation. Patient can have fever, all that uh, uh, you know like the, the features of inflammation, patient can even develop myalgia, arthralgia. So that is the difference between acne fulminans and acne conglobata. Now the second is how to treat. And obviously I see a lot of individuals who are asking me ma'am what is the treatment then? See acne conglobata you will treat these patients similar to the grade 4 acne. And what is the treatment of choice for grade 4 acne? Anybody can tell me the answer. What is the treatment of choice for grade 4 acne? The treatment of choice. Just give me. The treatment of choice for grade uh, for the acne conglobata is similar to grade 4 and that is oral retinoid which is oral retinoid isotretinoid what is the treatment of choice isotretinoid acne conglobata what is the answer okay so oral retinoid is the treatment of choice for acne conglobata but what about acne fulminans can you give isotretinoid to an acne fulminans patient never ever give isotretinoid to a patient who already has inflammation if you give isotretinoin, it can trigger more inflammation. So please remember the treatment of choice for acne fulminans patient is oral steroid. And I'm sure that you must be thinking, ma'am, we never give steroids in the patient of acne. But please remember my student, this is the only exception of giving oral steroids in a patient of acne and that is acne fulminans. So please remember the correct answer or the uh, the treatment of choice which you have to pick from the options for acne fulminans is oral steroids while for acne conglobata it is oral retinoid. Okay, so these are the different variants of the acne. Understood? Any confusion? The only exception of giving steroids in an acne patient is acne fulminans. And with this we are done with the discussion of the topic that is the acne vulgaris and a uh, few questions which is important. Let me revise that very quickly and then we can end our session of this med school. I hope you have enjoyed. <coughs> Anybody has any doubt, just let me know anything related to the acne topic which you are not able to understand because we are here to solve it. And I think this is the last slide on my screen. Achha, I have the pictures of all the types of acne. So let me very quickly go through that. 
how does the open comedon closed comedon looks like so first of all coming to the grade 1 acne so this is your uh, can you see here this is your uh, open comedon so i think that picture was a self explanatory the one which is given in the question very very easy and a simple image i think this is the best image which shows you the open comedons you can see a bulge with a black dot okay so this is your open comedon now here only you can see closed comedon let me mark it for you this is your closed comedon this is your closed comedon these are all your closed comedons what is this this is looking more like a pustule turning into a, a, a papule turning into the pustule so let me show you the image of a pustule a proper image of a pustule this was a pustular lesion so grade 2 acne pustule you can see so many pustules on the screen <coughs> uh yes so thank you all of you i hope you have enjoyed uh now the last is your this is that was the papule this is pustule the last image was papule this is a pustule and this is your nodulocystic acne so these are some of the images which you all need to know nodulocystic the pustular the papular and the comedon and with this we are done with this session the first session of med school uh please remember students like uh, or everybody here is trying to make nice classes for you uh, this is uh, just please subscribe this youtube channel for more such interesting uh, sessions also you can follow the dams delhi uh, telegram channel for uh, more questions and updates <coughs> uh, every day at 7 to 8 you will be having the different subject med school classes on our dams delhi youtube channel so please don't miss it hit the uh, bell icon so that you get the notifications of all such classes okay uh, pustules are grade 3 yes pustules are grade 3 uh, we you want more classes i will give you more classes don't worry so i am here to take the classes for you and don't worry i will take more and more classes okay so thank you all of you and have a nice day and please follow for more classes on this youtube channel take care